Hi everyone, I'm Justin Thomas, Product Manager on the Bitbucket Pipelines team. Today's topic is secure deployments with self-hosted runners. I'm going to take you through how to set up a hybrid CI-CD workflow with self-hosted runner and do a secure deployment to AWS without secrets using OpenID Connect. Before we start with the demo, let's talk about Bitbucket Pipelines. Bitbucket Pipelines is the number one CI CD tool on Bitbucket Cloud. From small teams to large enterprises, we run millions of workflows every month. There are 80 plus pipes, which you can use to integrate with third-party DevOps tool or cloud providers such as AWS and Datadog, Sneak, LaunchDarkly, just to name a few. The adoption of Bitbucket Pipelines is increasing. More and more teams are using Bitbucket Pipelines to automate their CI CD workflow. We know that Bitbucket Cloud is a great tool for small and medium sized teams. But as teams scale, they face few challenges with Bitbucket Cloud. Here at Bitbucket, our mission is to be enterprise ready so that on prem Bitbucket customers can move to Bitbucket Cloud. We recently shipped project level settings, encryption at rest, self hosted runners. And we are currently working on project level permissions, audit logs, auto scaling runners, multi step deployments, just to name a few enterprise grade features. If you want to learn more or get a more higher level overview of the roadmap, please visit the Atlassian's roadmap, roadmap page. I'll add the link to the roadmap in the description. Coming back to the demo, let me give you a brief overview of what a Bitbucket Pipeline runner is. Runners is how Bitbucket Pipelines execute their CI-CD workflow. And there are two types of runners, Cloud Runner and Self-Hosted Runner. Cloud Runner is how majority of our customers run their CI-CD workflow. They are easy to get started with, have no management overhead, and they scale as per your requirement. We have heard from customers that they need more flexibility around where and how their CI-CD workflows are executed. Enterprises have strict policies where they cannot allow their internal infrastructure to be exposed to the internet. So they want to execute their CI-CD workflow on their own infrastructure. An example use case would be when you want to deploy to your production instance, which is behind the firewall, or when you want to access internal systems for running integration tests, such as databases. We built self-hosted runner so you get the flexibility to execute your CI-CD workflow on your own infrastructure on the hardware of your choice. Self-hosted runners went GA in August last year. Now let's get on to the demo. Here we have a simple Hello World Node.js application, which is deployed to AWS ECS. So if you look at the Bitbucket pipeline CML file, we have two steps. The first step builds and publishes the container image, and the second one deploys it to an ECS. Currently, both of these steps run on cloud runners, and that's how most of our customers use Bitbucket pipelines. But we know that there are enterprises with strict policies around infrastructure. They don't want any of their internal services to be exposed to the internet. For these sort of use case, we have self-hosted runners. Now let's add a self-hosted runner and make the deploy step execute on it. To create a self-hosted runner, you need to go to the repository settings. And in repository settings, under pipelines, you can find the runner settings page. On this runner settings page, you will see runners that are associated with your repository, as well as runners that are created at a workspace level. So if you want to share runners across different repositories, you need to create it at a workspace level. For our current demo, we will be creating a repository level runner. So let's click Add Runner, which opens up the runner wizard. And the first thing that we need to choose is the operating system on which the runner is going to be running. So we currently have option Linux and Windows. A Mac is on the way. For our demo, we will be choosing Linux. Now let's give our runner a name. 
So this is a human identifiable name and would be useful for us when we come back in the future to manage runners. The next thing that you need to provide is a label. So by default, there are two labels to a runner. So one is self-hosted and the other one is operating system. In this case, it's Linux. So there are two default labels, self-hosted and Linux for our runner. And I will be adding another label for our use case, which is a prod deploy runner. So I'm going to add prod deploy label and click next. On this screen, you can see the command to start your runner. I will copy this command. Make sure you, you copy this command because you will not be able to access this command after you exit the wizard. On the next screen, you can see an example of how to use your currently created, newly created runner. It's pretty simple. You just need to add a runs on on a step and then specify the label that you have attached to your runner. Now let's click finish and the runner is created. As you can see, the runner is currently in an unregistered state. So now let's go to our terminal, which is connected to an EC2 instance running in the same VC VPC as the ECS. And over here, I will paste the command to start the runner and press enter. The runner is starting up. And as you can see, it has updated its status to online. So it's ping speed bucket and says that I'm online. Now, if you go back to our runner settings page, you can see that the newly created runner is in online state. And that means that it is ready to be used. Now let's go back to our YAML file and update our deploy step to use this runner. It's pretty simple. On the step that you want to be executed on a runner, just add runs hyphen on attribute and provide the label that you, we just created for the runner. So in our case, it's prod.deploy. So once that is done, let's commit this file. And as a good citizen, let's create a pull request for this change. So we're here. I have changed the deployment step deployment step to be executed on a self hosted runner. And let me give it a better name. A better branch name. That's it. And I'm just going to commit. This will create a branch and a pull request with that branch to master. Now, if we go to our pipelines page, we can see that a build has started where the first step is executed. Let's go to the source file and look at our YAML file again. Uh, before, since, so that we can come back to the pipelines page once the pipeline is completed. So here you can see that in the build as well as the deployment step, I'm using pipes uh, to integrate with AWS. So we have an AWS ECR pipe, which pushes the image that was built in the previous section to ECR. And similarly, we have an AWS ECS pipe, which deploys the image that was created in the previous step onto ECS. The one thing to note is that I had to enable Docker service because I am using Docker to build the image over here. Now let's get back to the pipelines. As you can see, the first step has succeeded and the second step is currently executing. This step is executing on a self-hosted runner. So if we go to our terminal, we can see that the self-hosted runner has picked up that step and is currently executing it. It has completed the step and it has printed the message saying that the step has succeeded and it's waiting for a next step. 
So if we go back to our pipeline, we can see that the deployment step and the build step both have succeeded. Just to make sure that this has worked, let's go to the ECR and see if a new image has been created or not. As you can see, a new image was pushed. And if you go to ECS, there should be another task which will install, the, which will deploy the latest image that we just built. As you saw now, it was, it's pretty easy or simple to set up a self-hosted runner and use it in your own pipeline. In the next part of the demo, I'm going to show you how to make this deployment much more secure with Bitbucket or with OpenID Connect without using a secret. Now let's go to the Bitbucket pipelines file. So we are on a branch Team 22 demo. As you can see, I'm using secrets to connect to AWS while deploying the image and also pushing the image to ECR and also while deploying the image to ECS. Now, secrets are inherently insecure. It's pretty easy to have an error in your script which would leak this secret onto the logs. Or anyone who has read permission to this repository can gain access to this secret access key. And also secret management is a huge trouble. It's a huge challenge if you want to maintain these secrets across multiple applications. Fortunately, we have OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect integration allows you to connect Bitbucket pipelines to any third-party provider which supports OpenID Connect. And in, for this demo, we will show you how to use OpenID Connect to do a ECR push as well as an ECS deploy from your pipeline. There are three main steps to setting up OpenID Connect. So first is you need to go to, you need to set up Bitbucket pipelines as an identity provider on AWS. Then you need to create a role, IAM role, which has permission to do the actions required by your CICD workflow. In our case, it's ECR push and ECS deploy. deploy. And finally, you need to come back to Bitbucket pipelines to enable OpenID Connect in your CICD workflow. Now let's go to AWS IAM and create a new identity provider. To create identity provider, you need to go to the IAM web console of AWS, click on identity providers on the left sidebar, and then click add provider. You need to choose, choose OpenID Connect. And to add an OpenID Connect provider, you need to provide two details. One is the provider URL and the audience. Both these details you can get from the OpenID settings, which is present in your repository settings under pipelines. So click on the OpenID Connect settings and you should be able to see the identity provider URL and the audience. Copy the identity provider URL from Bitbucket to AWS, click get thumbnail, then go back and copy the audience, just paste the audience, and click Add Provider, and that's it. We have added Bitbucket Pipelines as a web identity provider in AWS. Now we need to create a role for our identity provider so that it can actually access AWS. So to create a role, click on the roles sidebar, and then click Create Roles. In the trusted entity type, you need to choose web identity. And from the identity provider list, choose the OIDC provider that we just created. And choose the audience that we added. And then click Next. In the next screen, you need to choose the permission that you want to give to this new role. For our case, it's ECR push. Fortunately, we already have a custom policy which can do a ECR push. And the next permission that we need is ECS. 
We also have a custom pipe ECS policy, which allows you to do an ECS deploy. Now, once the permissions are set, click on the next button and you need to, where you will be prompted to give a name to your role. So for in our case, let's call it team 22, Bitbucket demo. Over here, you can review the permissions that are associated with this role. So over here you can see we are given ECS deploy and ECR push permission to this role. And you can click create role, which creates the role. And let's go to the role. So here you can see the role has an ARN and we will need this ARN to set up OIDC on the Bitbucket side. As a best practice, we want, uh, as a, as a best, practice, best practice, as we are going to use the role ARN at multiple places, let's add it as a repository level variable. Let's call it AWS YDC role ARN and copy the ARN from AWS and paste it over here. Don't think it needs to be secure. And let's click add. That's it. We have added the roles, YDC role ARN. Now let's go back to our source code and update our Bitbucket pipelines file. And it, let's click edit. Now to enable OIDC for any step, you need to set OIDC equal to true on the step. This will create a OIDC token for this step. And since we are using OIDC, we no longer need the security access tokens. Instead, we just need to mention the ARN. And we can do that by setting AWS OIDC role to the one that we just defined as a repository variable. So for AWS pipe, if the AWS OIDC role ARN is set, that tells the pipe that, tells the pipe to use OIDC instead of AWS access keys. So let's do the same thing for the deploy pipe here. And also we need to enable OIDC for the deployment step. Now we have enabled OIDC and updated the pipes to use OIDC to connect with AWS. Now let's click commit button. YDC, since we are already on the team 22 Bitbucket demo branch, I won't be creating a pull request. I'll just do a commit. So this will do a commit and which triggered a pipeline. And pipeline has started. Okay, now let's, as the pipeline is running, let's go back to the pipeline CML and see what we just did. So here, as you can see, uh, sorry, let's go to the team demo branch. So here you can see whenever you set a step to be OIDC true, whenever you set OIDC true on a step, Bitbucket pipeline generates a OIDC token, secure token for unique, that's unique to that step and exposes it as Bitbucket step OIDC token as an environment variable. And in your pipe, when you say that it has to use a OIDC rule ORN, it looks up for the environment variable and uses that token to talk to AWS. That's how the whole OIDC magic works. Now let's go back to our pipeline. 
So the first step has completed. And if I click on the ECR push pipe, it says that it's authenticated, authenticated with AWS using OpenID Connect. And it was successfully able to push the latest image to AWS. And the deploy step is currently being executed on the runner. And it has passed. Now let's go to ECS and see there is a new task or not. So still now the new task has not been scheduled. Let's go to ECR and see if there is a new image. Yes, there has been a new image that's pushed with OpenID Connect and ECS, there should be a new task. Yes, there's a new task which is provisioning, which would deploy the latest image. So now just to recap, if you look at the pull request, we enabled OIDC on the step, changed the access keys to use AWS OIDC role ARM, and to convert a cloud runner step to self-hosted, we just need to add runs on it, on it. And similarly, as the previous step, we enabled OIDC and started using AWS OIDC role ORN. Now, since I'm the only one, I will approve this pull request and merge it. That's it. Today, we saw how simple it is to build a hybrid CI-CD workflow with self-hosted runners. We also learned how to securely deploy to AWS with OpenID Connect without using any secrets. There was a lot of information. I hope you found it useful. For a more comprehensive overview of the roadmap, what's the demo titled Building Big Bucket Cloud for Enterprise Teams? Thank you, everyone, for joining me today in this table.